All right, so let's uh, overview of inertia. You've heard this all before. An object in motion will remain in motion at a constant speed unless there are unbalanced forces. An object at rest will remain at rest unless there are unbalanced forces. So first and foremost, if we want to be able to describe what something's going to do motion-wise in terms of inertia, we need to know if the forces are balanced or unbalanced. And once we know that, and we know what the object was initially doing, we can then make a statement to say the object stayed at rest, or the object continued to move at a constant speed, or the object started to accelerate, either speeding up or slowing down. Unbalanced forces cause acceleration. Think of it as a giant tug of war. If you're in a tug of war and one side wins, the side that wins gets the acceleration, so to speak. The acceleration goes in the direction of the unbalanced forces, the larger unbalanced force. All right, there's some key ideas that, uh, about drawing force diagrams that we want to talk about first because that will help us uh, be able to describe inertia. First, all objects are represented by a dot. Whether it's a car, a person, a ball, it doesn't matter. You can represent with a dot. It's pretty simple. All forces are represented by a vector. So you represent an object with a dot and a force with a vector. Now, a couple, uh, a few things here. If, uh, bigger forces are represented with bigger vectors. Uh, we're going to see all of this in a, in a moment. Uh, we're going to use tag marks, think congruency symbols in geometry, as another way to show the relative size of forces. Uh, and arrows on a vector move away from the dot. And drop these ideas down in your notes, and when we see some examples, it will make more sense. Uh, and the last point, that if you have a net force, you have acceleration. And the acceleration is going to be in the direction that has more force. So if you have some forces to the right and some forces to the left, but the right side wins the tug of war, so to speak, because there's more force on the right, then you would have acceleration to the right. Uh, so the winner of the tug of war gets the acceleration, so to speak. All right, now let's look at some examples. Uh, so we have three examples here. So these three situations, I went ahead and created the force diagram. So if we look over here, uh, this car, which is sitting at rest, has a gravitational force pulling it down, a surface force pushing it up. These two forces, they're not third law pairs, but they do happen to be equal in size and opposite in direction. So vertically, no one wins the tug of war. So the forces vertically are balanced. No acceleration, meaning whatever that object's doing, it's going to keep doing. That's what inertia says. We come over here and we look at free fall and we say, hey, in free fall, we remember the only force acting on the object is the force of gravity. Uh, because there's only one force, it's naturally unbalanced. That means there is acceleration. It's not zero. So if this object was at rest, it's going to start moving. It's going to start accelerating because the forces are unbalanced. Okay. Um, and then in this third situation, we do have air resistance, but uh, in, if you haven't yet reached terminal velocity, then the force of gravity is bigger than the uh, force of air resistance. So the forces are also unbalanced, meaning whatever the skydiver was doing, maybe they jumped out of the plane at rest and then they started to speed up um, so the acceleration is not zero. So three different examples. We are going to get into different other examples, but as you think about how to describe inertia, one big part of that is to be able to say, are the forces balanced or not? Because that tells you if you have a net force. And if you have a net force, you have acceleration. If you do not have a net force, you have no acceleration.